Hey guys, I'm Aaron and this is SketchUp Square One, where we take a look at the fundamentals of SketchUp. Today we're going to talk about these windows. So these windows on the side of SketchUp are great for relaying information about what you're working with, but they're also a great way to organize and control what's inside of SketchUp. But before you can use them for that, you have to understand how they work and how to control them. This video will be broken into two parts. The first part will look at the Mac interface, then we'll hop over and look at how they work in the Windows interface. Let's hop in. Okay, so in Mac, these windows are a bunch of floating toolbars basically. So they automatically snap together and see how that's snapping on there and they can expand and collapse individually. They all have a little arrow here in the corner where I can manually resize how big I want these to be. Uh, there is a minimum size. Most of them won't slide past this small, um, but I don't know if there's a limit to how big most of them can get. You can see when they're connected together, the whole bar does resize horizontally to uh, match the size. Uh, clicking on the title will collapse them. When you collapse them all the way down, there's a nice little package. So generally speaking, I work, do a lot of work on Mac, and this is my default toolbar. These are the, the sections that I have. I generally keep them kind of tucked up there to the right and expand them as I need to use them. I generally orient these in the order that I use them most often. So Entity Info is something that is almost always open when I model, and uh, I come down where Match Photo is something I use, but I only have Match Photo open if I'm doing a Match Photo model. And then it kind of like it works up from there. Tags I use a lot, components, outliner. And then I get down here, soften, smooth, I use occasionally, shadows every once in a while, fog rarely, and then match photo not very frequently. So that's my personal preference of how to orient them. So as far as what they are, we'll be going through videos that will touch on every single one of these and how to use each of them. But before we do that, I want to talk about how to use them. So up here under Windows, if I click on Windows, this section right here in the middle is all of these windows. So the ones that have a little dash next to them are the ones that are currently visible on my screen. If I come over here and expand one, so I'm gonna go ahead and click on Entity Info, make it big, and go back to Windows, you see I have a little check mark right there. So dashes are the ones that are on my screen, but collapsed, check mark, are expanded on my screen. You can see I have a couple more in here. Model Info, Material, Fonts, and Instructor that are not turned on. So there's a couple reasons for this. Uh, one of them down at the bottom, Instructor. I'll go ahead and turn Instructor on. And here's Instructor. Instructor is a great tool because what it does is it actively identifies what tool you're in and gives you tips on how to use it. So if you are a first time user in SketchUp, I highly recommend you have Instructor turned on. It will have the little animated GIFs that show you how it works. Uh, and you can read down here, here's all the modifier options for each tool. And if I change, look, change to move, it's gonna change what it tells me. This can be put into the, the, uh, the same group here and I can expand it. I personally don't use Instructor very much anymore, so that's why I generally have it turned off. Like I said, it's a good tool to have if you're a first time user. The other windows in here, Model Info, Materials, and Fonts are great tools, but they don't dock. So what I mean by that, if I pull up Model Info, uh, super good information. I come in here a lot to change things, units, whatever, but this will not dock up here with the rest, which means it's a floating window that stays on top all the time. So since I can't have it dock in here, I just close it unless I need it. Same goes on, on Mac for model info, materials, and show fonts. Good, good tools, good things to have here, but if they don't dock up here, then I don't usually keep them on. So that's the basics of how this interface works on Mac. Okay, now here we are in Windows. You can see the UI is a little bit different. Up here, rather than having those, those floating toolbars that I had in Mac, I actually have everything tucked into this default tray. So the tray itself is docked. In this case, I have it docked to the right side. Um, I have it permanently enabled right now, but you can collapse it. So there's a little pi push pin right here. If I click on the push pin, it'll auto hide. That way it gives me more of my screen back and it only shows up if I come hover over the tab. So it is possible to create multiple trays 
where I could have a certain number of these windows in each one. In this case, I just have the one default tray. And you can see in the default tray are the same options, well, similar options to what I saw over on Mac. And same work exactly the same way at this point. I can expand them to see what's inside of them, um, and I can put them back when I don't need them. I'm gonna go ahead and pin it so it's the same. So they are not controlled exactly the same way that I saw on Mac. On Mac, if I want to turn it off, I'd have to go over, or I could close it. Same thing here, I can just click here to close. Uh, if I want to enable it, it's a little different because I go to window and you see I don't have a list of all my windows here. Instead, I have a, a flyout for default tray. So in default tray, I can come in here and turn on which one of these pieces I want to see in there. So something you'll notice is different is that one, I have materials in here. It's actually part of the tray rather than, like I said, an unnestable window on Mac. And the other ones, model info and font aren't here because they're actually controlled in a different spot. So if I look on here, I can actually change what's in this tray. I can also come to manage trays or new tray and create a brand new tray. So if I wanted to, I could have like um, half this say entity info outliner and tags in one tray and then create a whole separate tray where I have things like maybe fog, shadow, soften edges, the things I use less frequently could be in a separate tray so it doesn't take up the space on here. Really, at the end of the day, how you want to use the trays. Do I want to collapse them in auto flat or do I want to pin them? Do I want to have multiple trays that have my different groups based on how I use them or order I use them? Um, which ones do I want? Maybe there's some I just turn off completely. That really all comes down to workflow at the end. When you're getting started, I do recommend it having the default tray and having most of these in here so that you can check the information. And if you follow along with a lot of videos and they refer to different windows over here in the tray, it's gonna be important to have them turned on so you don't have to stop an instructional video, go up to windows, edit the tray to turn them back on. Having it take up one line with match photo, even though you don't do match photo very much, is a lot less of an issue than coming in and having to go find the match photo window if you're in the middle of an instructional video or something like that. So as you're starting out, I do recommend having kind of a healthy block of these windows nested together. And on windows specifically, have this default tray locked out rather than flying out. I know you lose a little bit of space right here, but again, having that information there versus having it disappear every time you have to pull it up uh, might be a time saver for you, especially when you're just starting out. Once you get used to it and you develop your own workflow and you know it's there, it's great to have it collapse. But initially, it's nice to have it pinned so it's always present as you're learning how to use SketchUp. So like I said, the intention there was the high level how to use these windows not necessarily what information's in them and when you're gonna use each one. We'll create a video separately for each of those uh, coming up soon. So hopefully that helped you out. If you like that video, go ahead and click like down below. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. We create several videos like this each and every week and you'll be notified of them if you subscribe. Most importantly though, please leave a comment down below. How do you have your Windows set up? Are you using Mac or Windows? What's your ideal setup for this information? Do you have multiple tab bars? Do you have them floating around the windows or do you have them in one spot? We like making these videos a lot. We like them even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.